So I keep hearing a lot about Moore's Law when I'm reading about chip stocks. And I see that NVIDIA says that Moore's Law is dead and that Intel says it's not dead. And I feel like it might be kind of a big deal, like I might need to know what exactly is going on here. So can you tell me what Moore's Law is? That is a really good question. So Moore's Law actually isn't a law as much as it was an observation made by Intel co-founder and engineer Gordon Moore back in the 1960s. And basically he made this observation and this prediction that because of rapid advances in manufacturing technology, that the number of transistors on a semiconductor chip would roughly double every year. Not about a decade later in the 70s, he, he slightly revised that prediction and said they would double about every year and a half to two years. That's not very helpful. Maybe you could explain how a computer works in the first place. <laughs> okay, you're probably right. You got me there. Let's start with how a computer works first. So today's digital computers utilize sets of instructions to do tasks like maybe reading a web page or creating a document for work or watching a YouTube video like this. But some of those instructions are pretty complex and they're made up of really, really long strings of ones and zeros. Now these ones and zeros basically think of it like a binary alphabet. So just like we use an alphabet of letters to represent sounds and we string together those sounds to make words and then sentences and paragraphs and books and so on and so forth. Computers can string together these really long sets of ones and zeros to create really complicated sets of instructions to pull off some incredible things that we take for granted every day. Okay, so I can understand that these ones and zeros are the language that makes a computer work, but where do the ones and zeros come from? Right. That's another good question. Okay. So a computer chip has lots of little electrical circuits on it. Now the smallest of these little electrical circuits are called transistors. Think of a transistor like a light switch. It can be turned on or off. When it's on or conducting current, that's represented by the number one. When it's turned off, that's a zero. Now a few ones and zeros is pretty meaningless, but how about billions of ones and zeros? Now that's where we can get some really complex instruction sets for a computer. Now all of this data can create a really, really powerful set of instructions for a computer to execute. Something like maybe interacting with an application at work, maybe browsing the internet, playing a video game, or even streaming a video on YouTube. So today the average chip, maybe like what you have in your car might have hundreds of millions of transistors on it and even more advanced chips like what we have on our smartphones in a video game PC, or even in really big, powerful supercomputers and data centers. Some of these chips might have tens of billions of transistors on just a single chip with the ability to crank out so much digital information to work through all of these ones and zeros, our smartphones can do absolute circles around what big, giant, heavy computers used in businesses back in the 60s and 70s were able to do. So exactly how many ones and zeros did it take for you to explain this? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That makes a lot of sense. So now that I understand that ones and zeros are the language that the computer uses to do the things we want it to do, that comes back to my original question, I think. What is Moore's Law? Right. So Moore's Law was the prediction by scientist Gordon Moore, co-founder of Intel, that the number of transistors on each chip would double about every year and a half to two years. Basically, what Moore was saying was that the same size computer chip would have double the number of transistors on it every, every couple of years. So in other words, the amount of information a computer could read through, all the ones and zeros that it could interpret, would exponentially increase over time. And thus our computers would get more powerful, be able to do more complex things for the same or sometimes even less cost over time because that chip, again, was staying the same size, but more transistors getting fit into it. So has Moore's law proved true? Is that what happened with semiconductors? 
Yep, that's the big question, isn't it? Moore's law has indeed proven absolutely true for decades now. So back in the 1970s, Intel introduced the first microprocessor, which paved the way for the personal computer or PC market. Back in the 1970s and early 1980s, those PCs were pretty pathetic by today's standards. Memory was literally sometimes measured in how many thousands of words they could store. And the most advanced models that were available sometimes cost many thousands of dollars. But Moore's Law has been the driving force in, in propelling computing power forward now ever since then. And it's also been the principle helping software development Basically, developers have been able to rapidly add new features and more advanced capabilities in software because they know that Moore's Law was in effect and that the computing power would be there to help them pull off the tasks they wanted the software to do. But as you pointed out, many technologists, including NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Wang, have been saying for years now that Moore's Law is now dead. And it does actually look like that is becoming the case. Moore's Law, at the very least, is slowing down. Transistors are not doubling every, every couple of years. And worst case scenario, it might be quite a few years before the number of transistors double per chip. So why is Moore's Law ending? And what would that mean for a chip stock investor like you and I? Sounds like we're going to need a part two. Please like and subscribe here at Chipstock Investor, and we'll crank out some more ones and zeros for you later this week. 